watch our white boy any any white show white boy and all tears from their eyes and there shall be no death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have are, are passed away this this scripture basically like talks about how god will um, like to get over any any pain that will come from like death sorrow or anything like that in your life and you should be thankful for those things that allow you to go that, sh that shall allow you to grow become a better person and allow you to grow and dream with god Lord God, thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us all to come to church. Amen. And thank you for blessing us all with the ability to come to come to this house. Be able to worship your name and learn more about you, Lord God. And to have a stronger connection with you, Lord God. Lord God, we pray that more people will, will come along. And to come along and be pray to be blessed so we can change our lives and impact them impact them in a good way, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. joining us here at Hold Up The Light Ministry for our Sunday morning worship service. And we just thank God for you today. And I'll be bringing the message and I just thank God that Pastor is getting better and better. And uh, just don't be surprised when he show up one Sunday morning. Thank God. Amen? Amen. Well, the message today is going to come from John the 14th chapter, verse 16 and 17. I've been studying this uh, area for <clears throat> about two months now, and and Victor and let's mention this too. Victoria's broadcast will be coming back, Amen. And we have a series of teaching on this area that I'll be ministering on this morning. But I just want to do an introduction today, and in First John chapter fourteen, verse sixteen and seventeen. It says, and Jesus here was talking to the disciples at the Last Supper. And this was their last instructions that he gave them before he departed. Amen? And in verse 16 it says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwell with you and shall be in you. I want to talk about the first part today, and my topic today is. It says that in the beginning of verse 16, it says, And I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter. Well, I want to use for a thought, why was another comforter necessary? Why was another comforter necessary? Jesus told the disciple that he's going to pray to the Father that he will send you another comforter. Well, I asked that question. Soon as my eyes saw another comforter, then I said, well, if that was a, there will be another comforter, who was the first one? Because anytime you're talking about I will go another time, that means that you've been already. So God said he was sending another comforter. So I wanted to find facts to prove that there was a first comforter according to the word of God. But if we look at John 13, uh, just back up one chapter, John 13, uh, verse 1, B. It says the purpose of the supper was Jesus was final instruction to the disciple and expose what was in Judah's heart. Now, the second part, if we go back to that scripture on John chapter 13, part 13, I mean verse 1, part B, it says Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world 
and back to the Father. One of the main reasons why Jesus had the Last Supper because he knew this was the last time that he would be with the disciples. And he wanted to comfort them and let them know that there will be another comforter to replace him. Now, the question is, if there was another comforter, well, who was the first comforter? So let's look at some facts about the first comforter. And we're going to look in 1 John, I mean John chapter 1, verse 1. And it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And if we look at 1 John, verse 1 and 2, uh, it says that John gives more detail, uh, a detailed account of the first comforter. So if you look at 1 John, let's read it. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Let's turn to that. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. All right. It says, according to the King James, it says that... <clears throat> That which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Now, just kept, I'm just listening at this. At the word of life. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness. And showed unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. Now here is some things that John was bringing out. John said that the first comforter, we saw him with our own very eyes. We glazed upon him and heard him speak. Our hands actually touched him. He was the one who was from the beginning. He was the living in human form expression of God. Let me say that again. He was the living in human form, flesh and blood expression of God. He was the life giver made visible. Hallelujah. He was the eternal life giver who lived face to face with our heavenly father who has now revealed unto us. Let me read that one again. I love it. He was the eternal life giver who lived face to face with our Heavenly Father who have now revealed unto us. Gee, Christ, I mean, excuse me, Jesus the Christ became a living being and lived upon us. The comforter of all comforters. God was made in the flesh. 1 John 1, I mean, excuse me, fact 2, John 14, I mean, John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God spoke Jesus, the physical man, into existence. But God himself followed divine order. When God said, let there be light, there was light. God spoke it and it came into existence. God spoke Jesus into existence, which was the word, became the living word. The word became alive and God needed a physical body for his word to dwell in. So he spoke Jesus into existence. Amen. Now, let's look at why I said, but God himself followed divine order. God didn't just bring Jesus here in the world. Sure, he went to Mary and told her that she will have a savior. She will carry the savior of the world. But God has divine order. If God had not went to Joseph, and Joseph didn't know when Mary came to him and he saw that Mary was pregnant, 
if God had not revealed that Jesus was the Christ to Joseph, Joseph and Mary would have had trouble all doing their marriage because there would have been a spirit of doubt. But what God did to make sure that Jesus Christ lived in a life, in a family, and with a father that will raise him, knowing, knowing that he was God. Mm -hmm. And in Matthew's, the fact and the proof of that is in Matthew's chapter 1, verse 23. God spoke directly to Joseph. God spoke directly to the head who would be the earthly father of the Messiah. And this is what he told Joseph. Because when Joseph left, he wanted to put Mary away privately. He just knew Mary had an affair with another man. Here is something that God said that she's going to conceive by the Holy Ghost. Something that was never heard of. They would not believe that even though scripture saying it, they still wouldn't have believed it. They looked at Mary as a, a, a anybody just, just messing around, fooling with another man, knowing she was engaged to Joseph. But so God had to correct this. So God had a divine order for everything. If there is no divine order in your life through the power of God, something is wrong. You wonder why you're having problems? There is no divine order. In a marriage, there should be divine order. Mary and Joseph was on one accord. Nobody can't tell, but it wasn't because Jesus grew up in a loving family and the word declared. And here's what the angel told Joseph. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. And when Joseph heard that a virgin was going to conceive a child right then and there, he knew Mary didn't have an affair. God made sure that everything was in divine order. God is just not going to go to one and not go to the other. God is a God of a second chance. He's a God of balance. That's why I tell people all the time, when somebody come to you with something, I tell them, just don't listen to that side. That's the old saying my mother used to say. That's his side, her side, and then the whole truth. Because there is balance in the middle. In the middle. Because when we in our flesh, we express how we feel. And nobody is excused from that point. So Joseph knew then and there that Jesus was the son of God. He was Emmanuel, mean God, with us. That's why the Bible said, in the beginning was the word. The first thing the Bible said in John, in the beginning was the word. The fact is that Jesus was in God. Because Jesus represents the word. God couldn't send nobody else. He had to send the word. He couldn't send nobody else. He had to send the word. And the word was Christ. And Christ dwell in Jesus. Who was the son of Mary and Joseph. But he became Emmanuel because Christ was in him. Because every time Jesus spoke, it was a word. <laughs> Woo! It was a word. He was full. They say, and we beheld his glory full of grace and truth. He was full. Christ was full. Jesus was full of the word. The word. He overflowed with grace and truth. Now, why was Jesus filled with grace and truth? He had a mission. Christ had a mission. It had to be grateful. God had to make sure that that word was full of grace because grace is God's unmerited favor. God came to us knowing we didn't deserve him. But he came, Jesus came, Christ came in the body of Jesus so that we can have grace. Jesus was very merciful. He was very 
the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted to use that to try to trick Jesus. So they went to him and they said, what, what, will we, what shall we do with this woman? And they said, Jesus began to stir around in the dirt. And then he lifted up his eyes. Now here is grace, y'all. He said, he who has not sinned cast the first stone.
just mention it and keep on going. This is a lesson that needs to be embedded in the heart of man. He said evil. He could have said the spirit of truth. But let me say it in addition. He said, I'm not going to just pray to the Father to send you a comforter, but in addition to that, I'm going to come, the spirit of truth. Ha! Woo! Did you hear me? Let me go back and read it again. I will pray to Father, and he will give you another comforter that may abide with you forever and ever. Even in addition, the spirit of truth. Now, why did he say this next? Listen to what he said. Whom the world cannot receive. They did not receive Jesus Christ when he was on the earth. But Jesus was full of grace and truth. He said, I'm sinning it again with you, Holy Spirit. I'm sinning the spirit of truth again. Because I still got some people on earth. I still got generations to come that need the truth. He said, whom the world cannot receive. If you are not in Christ, why are you worrying your nerve with people that don't believe in Jesus? The word of God said, they're not going to receive him. There are people out there that are Luciferians that are satanic worshipers, and they don't want to have anything to do with God. They don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. But God tells us to walk in love. Because that God, the Holy Spirit, the one draw you. God begin to work on people. And then all of a sudden, they'll start coming asking you questions. Because God knows what's in the porticles of their heart. Because they were influenced wrongly coming up. And when their eyes begin to open up, they begin to see believers that's walking in truth. That no matter how you persecute them, they still going to walk in love. That's why God told us to be empowered, mm. empowered with the Holy Spirit. Because that's the only way sometimes, Pastor, we can make it through some of the things that we go through and the way people treat us and lie on us and talk about us and try to destroy our families and then they'll try to destroy your children to get next to you but it's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost he said that whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not they don't even want to see him neither know him how can you understand something you don't know when I went in that calculus class trying to get my certification in mathematics and I got in calculus one, I said, Lord, how about, what they mean by limits and all these signatures? And then I come to find out all it was was rise over run. They just changed it to a word that we didn't even know. Mm. <laughs> if you got an algebra one background, a good, solid, Algebra one background, there is nothing in math that you can't do. Because it all come back to algebra one. It says, but ye know him not. Listen at this. For he dwell, oh, I'm sorry, let me go back. Neither know him, but, you know what that pastor say about them buts, you got to stop. But ye know him. Who are you talking about? The believers that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because they know that the next step is the comfort that's coming. For he dwell with you and shall be in you. Now why did they put them separate? Because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. But he want to live on the inside of us. But he's not going to go over your will to get in you. Amen. 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 But you know him as a believer of God. We know him intimately because he remains with us and will live in us. That's why Jesus told the disciples, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, 
Everybody say, I got the Holy Ghost if I'm speaking in tongues. Well, I come to realize one thing in this Christian walk. Everybody that's speaking in tongues is not speaking in tongues of the Holy Ghost. The devil speaks in tongues too. So, what is the evidence that the Holy Spirit lives in you? The Holy Spirit empowers you to love your enemies. The Holy Spirit empowers you to forgive those that do you wrong. Hey, the Holy Spirit empowers you to want to live a sanctified life. Now, everybody, I don't want to be sanctified because I'm a Baptist, I'm a Catholic. No, all of us should be sanctified. Because one of the characteristics of God is that he's Jehovah Makadish, the one who sanctifies. What that means? Living a clean life before the world. So if you don't want to be sanctified, you don't want Jehovah to sister do. Because what? Jehovah Makadish. And then here come Jehovah Tiskanu. The Lord our righteousness. Mm. Because the Bible said without holiness you shall not see God. Mm. Intimate, intimately, intimately, oh I can't get it right y'all. Is having a personal relationship with Jesus, with Christ the Jesus. It is having a personal relationship with Christ the Jesus. Because I want to put Christ first. Because Christ is the word. Christ is the word. He said he had a name that is above all names. Jesus was a, a name that everybody like Michael John Linda. So that represents the flesh. But Christ, ha, he is the word. He was with the Father in the beginning. I mean, God is so good. He was introducing Jesus Christ when he said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was who? With who? God. The Word was with God. Who? I'm going to close on this. It says, If Christ is not your personal Lord and Savior, who walk in obedience to God's Word, and learn to walk in love daily. You will never fully understand and totally receive the other company. Mm. Who is the Holy Spirit? Because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. I'm going to pray today that God, for those that don't want do not want the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not speaking in tongues. If you spend 55% of your time gossiping and talking about people, you need to go talk to God about receiving the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost will empower you. The Holy Ghost transforms you. I mean, he convicts you when you wrong. You know, you can say things and then you don't have to say nothing to the person. Just say Holy Ghost, deal with them. And you know what? If the Holy Ghost is in them, it's going to be a change. It's going to be a change, Pastor. You can't walk in pride and say you're full of the Holy Ghost. Because pride is one of the seven things that God hates. And you notice know one thing? That that's one of the things that the devil get people to do is to have pride. Oh, don't you apologize to them. You ignore her. Walk over them like you don't see them. That's a spirit of pride. And the Holy Spirit, when we receive him, convict us and let you know that is not of God. The Holy Spirit speaks to us all the time when we ignore him. And I ask God to give me an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Because I thought the Holy Spirit was my perfect to know that I had the Holy Spirit, that I was speaking in tongues. But I come to realize I can speak in tongues all I want if I am not 
sanctified through the word of God, if I'm not walking in holiness every day, if I'm not trying to change my life and not be a part of the naysayers, you know who the naysayers are. Always criticize everything. Amen. You know, we got to learn to be there and not be there. Amen. Not say things that we shouldn't say. And when we slip what we do, we repent. Right. That's what I love right. about God. God know that as long as we're in this flesh, we're going to have battles. But I pray today, I just want to pray that you come to know and have a true encounter with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to pray today that you will desire to have a true encounter with the Holy Spirit. I'm not here to judge nobody. I'm just here to share what God has given me. And I want to continue this lesson in our victorious broadcast on the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit connects to the Father. How do we recognize the Holy Spirit characteristics? And he has nine characteristics that we can talk about. And it's not going to be in one broadcast because it's just a long teaching. But I thank God today that God is bringing my life where he wants me to be. I am fulfilling the will of God this day by teaching on the Holy Spirit. Because that's my assignment. Glory to God. My assignment is to speak in on behalf of the Holy Spirit. To introduce them to the Holy Spirit like they've never seen before. Because every day God is opening up the eyes of my understanding. Let us pray. Father, I thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for your mercy. I thank you, Father, for your truth. I thank you, Father, that you are Jehovah Makedish, the one who sanctifies. Oh God, I thank you right now. I thank you, Father, that you are Anonai. Lord, the Lord, there is no God greater than you. And I thank you, Father, for being El Shaddai today, the all-sufficient one. Oh God, I thank you that I come to know you, Lord. God, let us come to know you, Father. Open up the eyes of our understanding that we come to know you in spirit and in truth. Oh, God, I thank you right now, Father. Open up the eyes of our understanding that we may receive the Holy Spirit. God, in truth, God, in grace. Lord, we thank you right now. We praise you in Jesus Christ's holy name. We just thank you today. And we're going to uh, upload this message to YouTube. And we ask you to join us today. We thank God for you. And we pray God's mighty, mighty, mighty blessings be upon you this day. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen.